what is this concept of what we call true file-based editing? We are, we are manipulating closed flat files. And these flat files could come from anywhere. It could be a, a Cynodec generated file, but it could be generated in Final Cut or really any other um, uh, source of, a, of, of files, whether it's MOV or OP1A or um, OP Atom MXF. Um, it could be ProRes, could be DNX, could be ABC Intra. These are all files that we can get into. And literally, we're going in to, this, to that actual physical file and changing content, so replacing video, repla replacing audio. Um, in the scenario that we're going to be going forward with, we're going to be doing this via RS-422. Um, again, we're going to be looking at this currently coming off of a uh, Avid Media Composer. And it's looking at it like a tape deck. And in fact, the Cinedeck is really emulating a tape deck. So as far as the Avid is concerned any other, and any other connected device, it is a SRW5500 that it's talking to. It is not a Cinedeck. Um, so really, any device that can talk to an RS-422 communication that's looking for a tape deck can control the Cinedeck. Um, so the different sort of capabilities that we have um, in the most basic sense, and that's really what we're going to be looking at here, is the basic insert edit, where we can replace a frame of video, multiple frames of, multiple frames of video, um, audio, a piece of audio, an audio stem, you know, various mixed tracks, stereo tracks, whatever, um, as well as, of course, audio combined, combined, with, combined with video simultaneously. And... Um, but the other thing we're going to be talking about is essentially assemble editing. And you know, most commonly, at least in my perspective from my production experience, that's a really typical scenario in a live to tape um, format where you're basically recording a show live onto tape, and then basically as soon as you're done, you're turning it around and putting it on the air, just like you're working on tape. So the ultimate virtual tape environment, we've got the basic insert editing. Um, which is being able to drop content into a file. So you've got an existing program, you've got some video or audio content, you want to drop into it, and we can do that literally just like on tape. Um, you, you know, set an in-out point, drop it in there, and you're done. Um, and again, it works with uh, Op Atom uh, MXF content, Op 1A MXF content, MOV or QuickTime content. Could be ProRes, could be DNX, could be ABC Intra. Um, and um, there's actually two different ways of doing, doing this. Um, what we're going to be looking at today is over an SDI line, so literally doing a digital cut and some corrections using the digital cut tool from the Cinedeck. And, uh, but the whole bottom line con concept here is that there's no need to re-render the whole show or re-export the whole show. All you're doing is working on that little bit of a spot. So, I mean, as Jeff was, Jeff was saying, you know, you've already QC'd the hour-long show. You've got a, a two-minute section. You've got to double-check because that's what you just replaced, and that's it. You're done, okay. and you can move on. So looking at that um, in, a, in, a, in sort of a... Um, a, a live to file sense, we can build files on the fly. Um, so basically you can start recording, set an endpoint, can you rec continue recording, back it up, queue it up, set an endpoint, continue recording, back it up, queue it up, set an endpoint, continue recording on down to the end of the show, and you're done. Um, you've got the show done, there's no exporting, no rendering, it's just you're done, you've got a flat file, you're closed and it's ready to go. Um, the third sort of scenario is kind of half in the middle. Um, it's basically like working with a black tape. Um, we create a black file or a pre-striped file um, in the format that you need. So it could be a ProRes HQ or, or whatever with how many audio channels. Um, you could have these files um, laid up into a folder someplace, sort of a virtual shelf of black tapes. Just grab one of those things and, uh, or copy one of them and put them into your uh, workspace and you can start working on it. Um, having said that, it doesn't take long to create one because it's just black. Um, it takes about three minutes for a half an hour um, file to be generated as a, as a black file. So it's a, it's a pretty quick process. So with the black file, um, you've got this empty canvas, so to speak, and you can start dropping content onto it. So you can drop in video, you can drop in audio, you can insert other audio, you can replace audio, you can replace video, plug and keep plugging in content, you know, much like a jigsaw puzzle. It's kind of a getting, beating a dead horse in a way, but just like on tape. Um, so, and again, when you've gotten to the end, done is done. There is no exporting, no rendering, et cetera. Um, some of the basic files that are sort of sitting behind the uh, file-based uh, features. Um, again, ProRes, DNX, and ABC Insure are the, uh, are the codecs we're working with now. We are going to be adding more codecs in the future. Uh, it's very important to understand that these files could be generated anywhere. They don't have to be generated on a CineDeck. Um, so it could be a DNX file from your Avid, or it could be a, a, a ProRes file from Final Cut or whatever. Um, again, MOV or QuickTime Wrapper, 
MXF op one A, op one A wrapper, MXF op atom wrapper. So those are the three main uh, wrappers that are in use, and uh, it's pretty easy to deal with. Um, there's actually a couple different ways to manipulate this concept. We're going to be looking at it again from Avid, Avid Media Composer using the uh, digital cut tool. Um, but you can also do it channel to channel on a center deck. So you could basically have, for example, on channel two, a target file loaded up, and on channel one, some source content that you want to insert into that target file. You set some endpoints and insert it in there. Um, again, that's a baseband process, just like we're going to be doing what we're going to be doing with the Avid. So you're really literally going out video out of channel one into channel two. Um, controlled by Avid's digital cut tool. That's obviously what we're going to see in a minute. Um, you've got that full flexibility of being able to insert video and or audio and or both. Um, we can assemble programs live to file, as I love to call it, live to tape, as it used to be. Um, no rendering, no re-exporting, etc. And yeah, the real end game here, once again, is you're reducing your quality check time, your, rather your QCing time. Um, you're working on a small portion of the program, you don't need to go back and check the whole thing. You're done. Um, one of the unique features that we're also um, supporting is 32 channels of audio. Um, so you'll be able to have a, uh, um, a single deliverable with 32 channels of audio. And although there's an SDI limitation of 16, because of the insert editing capability, you can obviously go back and add additional 16. So you can do a layoff video in 16 channels of audio, go back and do insert of the next 16 channels or however many channels you need. Um, in terms of the sort of digital certification, um, these files have been looked at both on a Tektronix Serify system as well as Intera's uh, Baton system, and eyes, as in human eyes, um, passes all these things no problem. And, and it's really, it's kind of funny. In some ways, this is a holy grail concept in that it's been an ongoing problem where you've got this nonlinear environment which has just made editing so much better and so much easier. But at the same time, on the back end, you now have this whole sort of expert, export rendering process that can get in your way. And we're eliminating that. It's a very simple thing in a way that you're just kind of going in and dropping in a couple of pieces of, you know, a couple of pieces of audio or video. But yet it's been really hard to achieve, and we now have it. Um, last thing is we are doing some testing and development uh, with both Avid DS, Final Cut Pro, and Premiere. So that will be coming um, as, a future, as future versions come out. So let's take a look at this um, on the Avid Media Composer. Let's see if it's still alive and running in the background. Had an interesting scenario with the last uh, session where it sort of disappeared on me. Um, actually, I, I sort of gave it away. I clicked on the timeline in the wrong place, but you can see what we're going to be fixing. I've got the wrong lower third font in this, in this piece, so uh, we're going to be fixing that in a moment. But first things first, um, we're going to be doing a, a digital cut. And um, you can see I've got a sequence down here in the bottom left. I'm going to try unmuting folks again just for kicks and see if uh, things have quieted down. Okay, I've got you opened up again, and it seems reasonably quiet. Very good. Um, so you can see down below I've got a, uh, a, a simple timeline, not terribly long because we don't want to spend an hour obviously exporting out or rendering out or digital cutting a show. Um, and I'm not, I don't have time to really go through all the setups on the Cinedec, but right now I've got the set, Cinedec set up to record a, a ProRes uh, master of this thing. Um, and uh, so we'll go to our output and digital cut tool. Um, we are going to be doing the entire sequence, so I'll check on that. And uh, I've got audio 1 through 6 already turned on. We're obviously inserting video at the same time. And uh, always a good idea to check decks just to sort of be sure things are going good, although you can see over here on the left-hand side of the center deck um, that there's a remote light there indicating that there's a good RS-422 connection. And got the digital cut. And you should notice a red sort of border pops up. It initially flashes during sort of the pre-roll, and then it will go solid during the actual record. And then obviously when you're done, it will stop with the, with the solid uh, border. A uh, couple of points um, that I should sort of mention is we've got a lot of flexibility for storage. Right now I'm actually recording this thing um, to one of the internal SSDs. But I'd probably say most of our customers are doing what we call redundant writes. So they're writing to two different destinations at the same time. They're recording to the internal SSDs and to a SAN or a NAS. Um, so you've got network storage immediately accessible, and you've got a sort of safe copy on your uh, SSD as a backup. So there's a number of different ways you can sort of uh, manipulate the file destinations. It's very, very uh, flexible. There's our great incorrect title. Um, 
You can also see here on the screen, um, as we're following through this timeline, channel three and four are, are running right now for the audio, and then we'll switch back to one and two. And then a little bit later on, I'll be going back and doing an insert onto channel five and six just to kind of see how that audio insert functionality works. Um, we can see our file name down at the bottom here. It's number 006 um, of this uh, sort of file name. And we're just about at the end. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. And there we go, digital cut is complete. Okay. Um, normal circumstances, when you, when you press play, it'll open up the last file that was recorded. Uh -huh. So we can kind of scratch through this thing or scrub through it, and we can see, oh yeah, there's our, uh, sorry about that, there's our uh, incom incomplete uh, font. And just for kicks, well actually we'll, we'll wait and look at that in a, in a minute. So we've got, we've got the program, it's all done. Um, uh, but we need to go back in and fix that title. Or I can set up. I'm going to close my digital cut tool here for a minute. One and um, here's our title on the timeline. I've got the correct title already loaded up in there, and the in and out points are already set. So I will uh, replace that title. I will be a good person and add the uh, proper uh, sort of fade in and fade out to it. And then uh, go ahead and render it so it uh, will play cleanly. <coughs> Set it up with a generic so that's the sort of corrected title. We now need to set some endpoints around it um, so we can insert that back into our mm -hmm. uh, final uh, piece. <laughs> um, digital cut tool. In this case, we are going to be doing an insert, so we'll deselect entire sequence. We're not going to be doing audio, so we'll deselect the audio tracks. Um, I have to say that the, this whole Avid thing is a bit new to me again. I did a lot of work with Avid up until about mm, 2003 or so. I was regularly editing on editing Avid, but since then I haven't done much. So a lot of the basics are still the same, but I've forgotten a whole lot of stuff. But anyway, um, so we'll go ahead and do this uh, digital cut here. We've got the, uh, um, oh, my points didn't actually get done here. In point. And out point. I must have hit the wrong key. Okay, so now I've got an in point and out point set. And uh, digital cut. Okay. You'll see as it drops in. Ah, I, this, I, I did the same thing last time, too. <laughs> Very important thing you need to do is change the mode of the Finidec into edit mode. Always helpful. Um, we're going to go from normal up in the top right here down into insert baseband mode. Um, I guess I should be fired now. I'll take a vacation for a little bit. Um, so we're going to insert baseband now. We're going to open up the file uh, that we need to work on. And it's already highlighted here, as we can see. So we're going to play selected, load it up, and once again, we'll take a look and see where our incorrect title is. There it is. And uh, I should uh, be able to function normally now as uh, things go well, and we'll ask for the digital cut. And uh, you'll see the two edit points show up there. The playhead starts rolling down towards the insert. The video drops in. That's the, uh, the right title now. And digital cut is complete. Um, so if we kind of drag into this, we can see we've got that in there now, which is correct. And just for kicks, we're going to switch over to, um, I'm actually looking at the SSD over the network of the uh, SSD that's in the Cinedec where we just recorded that. So this is a uh, file number six. And we'll double click that to open it up in uh, just a QuickTime player. Shrink this window down a little bit. And then we'll drag in, and there's our title. Um, the um, insert is in there. So if we go back to our uh, environment here, the have it in the center deck. Um, so that's basically the concept for a video insert. and. Um, we will drop across and just do an audio only insert now. So I'm going to be doing audio onto five and six. Actually, let me get this digital cut tool out of the way for a second. Set a arbitrary in point and out point on our timeline here and load up some source content. Turn off the video and uh, we've got audio five and six set up for the uh, insert. And uh, we will drop that into our timeline. So we've now got a couple of new audio tracks in our timeline. Endpoint and 
our point. Digital cut tool, six and five and six are uh, already selected as we did that before. We're still set up just to do an insert, not the entire sequence. Let's just uh, check DEX for good measure. And start this insert. Again, we'll uh, load that destination tape. We'll see it back up again. Playhead starts rolling down. We've got the in and out points. And now we should see the uh, uh, channel five and six audio meters are now deflecting with that insert for channel five and six. Digital cut is complete. So that's really the, uh, the idea there for doing the, uh, the audio only um, insert. And again, one of the nice things, actually I don't know if I mentioned it at the top or not, we are actually um, working with Pro Tools um, to set it up so we'll be able to do these uh, inserts from Pro Tools, um, which will give you quite an interesting capability of being able to already have a video file and then insert the audio into it. So now we can see channel five and six deflecting there, and uh, along with one and two, and then five and six will go away again at the end of that edit. And uh, it's all uh, done. Um, so that's basically that process. Let me check my notes here and see if I uh, forgot anything. Um, no, I think we're uh, we're pretty good. I, I, will, I will make one last point. Um, down here at the bottom right of the Cinedec uh, um, interface here, you'll see create blank tape. Um, this is the interface you've got for basically creating those black files where you can set a, you can set a start time and an end time or a duration for your piece and set all the formats for it and then create that file. And it just generates literally a black file and parks it wherever you want to park it. Um, basically just like creating a, creating a file if you're recording it, except it's much faster because you're just generating it um, as a generic um, black thing. So because there's no data really in the video, it's very, very quick. All right, so let's continue on. Um, just a little bit of an overview on the Cinedex themselves as to what these machines are. Um, really, basically, we're talking about enhanced digital recorders. You know, DDRs on steroids, tape machines that, that are, that are you know, or tape, tape machine replacements that can do all kinds of amazing stuff. Multi-channel, uh, multi-codec, multi-format, everything from SD up to 4K. Um, and that includes uh, 4K 60p recording uh, for those who are interested in pushing the envelope. Um, in terms of the uh, flavors uh, that we support, pretty much every codec you want to be using in any kind of production environment. Um, and then across uh, in 2014, this is really the, 2014 really was the year of 4K, so that's really when we did the 4K and UHD uh, development. And we've also uh, implemented JPEG 2000 as an additional optional codec that you can uh, pick up. Um, so really, again, just about every codec you'd want to be using. I mentioned a little bit about the recording destinations, but really we support a multitude of places, and you can literally file by file choose where you want them to go if you want to get that detailed about it. Internally, we use hot swappable um, removable SSDs. We can connect to USB 3 and eSATA drives. We can connect to, for example, this Dulce storage, which is a modular removable RAID chunk that connects via a, a PCI adapter card. But then again, most of our folks are using LAN-based um, uh, connections, so whether it's uh, ISIS or uh, Harmonic Media Grid or Facilis, any number of uh, SAN and NAS systems. We are a Windows uh, 7 platform, Windows embedded. And pretty much every SAN system out there has got a, a Windows client um, for running, on, you know, running the Cinedec with your SAN client connected. In terms, in terms of the basic recordings, if we're looking at a four-channel machine, um, and or the two-channel machine, really, for that matter, uh, we can record master and proxy for all the incoming channels. Um, there is a slight limitation on our RX in that we can only do an H.264 proxy. Uh, but for the four-channel machines, you can do basically any master and any proxy. So, you know, a couple of examples, uncompressed and ProRes proxy or a DNX proxy with, with a DNX master or whatever. And then again, we've got this redundant file capability where you're writing files to two different destinations at the same time. Um, the 4K deliverables are the same idea but a little bit different. Um, in this case, we're delivering you uh, the, the 4K master, which can currently be either ProRes or uh, Cineform. And then along with that, simultaneously, we're giving you an HD master, an HD proxy, and an H.264 H2 streamable file. Um, so all your deliverables at the same time, all the same file naming, time code, et cetera. So you know, doing matchbacks and such, especially between that proxy, master, and 4K, um, a breeze. And then again, you've got that redundant file capability. Um, 
in some ways, it's, I'd say one of the most, probably the most important feature when it really comes down to it is the naming flexibility. Literally, there are no restrictions. You can name your content whatever you want. And one of the niceties in this whole process is, is if you're working in an Avid environment with op atom content, those atoms, so each one of those files that you see uh, actually on your drives has that name. It is not some generic like A2QMRQQAO2 or something like that. Um, it says, you know, interview whatever you've, you've named it as, and then has a, you know, a small appending at the end for the A and V um, indications. Um, for the most part, we use variables or wildcards uh, for the naming. Um, so in this case, we're looking at um, project and encoder, which in a simple scenario of a demo project would be demo channel one, demo channel two for the folder structure. For the file name with those same variables, project, encoder, take number, gives you demo channel one and then 001, 002, and so on. To add a little more information to it, again, using just the variables, we can add time of day, so demo channel one, 001, and then when you actually hit record, it'll drop in the time of day um, into that file name. And there's a whole slew of variables that are available to you. Um, the complete range of sort of time and date uh, functionality, you've got a series of user-definable uh, variables. So you can have, for example, a show ID or program number, whatever. Um, and I neglected to mention actually in the previous session, but I will remember it now. Um, you can also, of course, type um, content. So you can manually type stuff in. You can copy and paste. So literally, there's no limitations on how you create your file names. Um, in terms of this basic system-wide features, um, very important is the fact that the channels on these things are completely separate. Um, you can do whatever you want with each one of them. So, for example, on a four-channel machine, you could be recording 1080i59 on one channel, 1080p24 on a, on a second channel, 720p on a third channel, and then playing back something on your fourth channel um, with full independent, you know, transport control, etc. Um, we do support quite a bit of um, metadata burn-ins, and uh, also we can burn in a color LUT into your proxy. So, for example, you can do your file name and time code, and then have a color LUT burned into your proxy. Um, we support currently the dot cubes. Um, it seems to be a fairly standard uh, 3D LUT that uh, people use. Um, we've kind of talked about the, the, the insert and assemble editing. That's really what this whole presentation is about. So that's obviously, um, I would say, a extremely unique feature. Um, but we also have built into each system for each channel, you can have playlists and basic um, playlist editing. So basically putting together clips and subclips for play out, generating an EDL. Um, and there will be some other capabilities coming sort of behind that, um, the ability to sort of wrap that as a single file, that kind of thing. Um, each channel can have its own EDL associated with it, and that can be looked at a couple different ways, but basically each channel could, for example, be driving a tape machine and working off an EDL, or they could, it could be monitoring incoming time code and recording content based off of that EDL. Um, pretty much the full range of remote control that you might expect, obviously RS-422. We support VDCP. We support the AMP protocol, um, over both of those over... Uh, um, IP, as well as if you can do things like a KVM switcher, as well as standard USB devices, and that kind of thing. Um, we talked a little bit about the redundant files and destinations, but that is obviously also an extremely unique uh, capability. The uh, segment record, there's a couple different modes for that. There's time-based segment record that uh, allows you to break your files on a time-based um, setting. So, for example, every minute or every five minutes. It'll close the file, open up a new file, and keep on going. And of course, that's frame accurate. It ends at frame 16, picks up at frame 17. Um, a time code break mode. So for example, if you're playing a tape into uh, the system and it's got breaks in the time code, you can have the system generate a new file at each one of those breaks or not, depending on what your desires are. And then there's manual break, which allows you to simply push a button on the front of the interface to say, OK, break the file now. We talked about the simultaneous master and proxy recording for SD and HD, and that is true across the board for SD and HD, so you can do master and proxy for all of your inputs. Um, and then those simultaneous, simultaneous deliverables for the 4K, which is really unique, because at this point in time, we're sure it's still at a situation where there's a limited amount of destinations for your 4K content, but obviously recording 4K content is quite useful, so you've got it in the archive, so you can be recording all your stuff with an HD master, delivering an HD master, and then six months, a year from now, or whatever it is, you can go back bring that 4K out of the archive, you've got all that time code information, it all matches back, and you do your production. A um, little small side point, uh, we, do our, we are running a special um, that's, that's sort of active right now that will, it's actually quite, quite impressive. Um, basically what we're giving you is a two-channel ZX for the RX price. And I should basically explain that the ZX is a modular system based on the MX 
Um, so it can either be two or four channels, depending on how many video cards go in there, plus other ancillary items. Um, the RX is a half rack wide unit that's a little bit more restricted. Most importantly, the RX doesn't give you the, the ability to have like 10 gig or 8 gig fiber, um, and it doesn't give you access to all the proxy types, at least not in a normal multi-channel mode. Um, so what we're giving you here is the ZX two-channel um, ZX20. All of the RX features, which is basically the full feature set, because the RX and the MX come fully loaded, um, which that means all the standard codecs and wrappers, the file-based insert editing, advanced tech control, etc., at the same price of a standard RX. It's really a pretty cool uh, deal. I think that I pretty much kind of covered the uh, the ball game. So um, let me uh, go to my nice little ending slide here. Um, indeed, thank you for your participation and your interest. And you know, we are of course available to answer questions either on the phone or by the email. Um, if you want to get to me directly, uh, you'll see when you go to the contact form, there's a sales engineer um, option which sends mails directly to me. And uh, so if you've got sort of technical questions and such, I can answer most of them, not all of them. I may have to go back to the developers for some of them, but, um, you know, that all works. And actually, as a closing point, I should actually um, sort of tell you a little bit about Cinedex from the standpoint that we are a small company. I mean, we are not a Sony. We are not a Harris. We are not a massive sort of corporate entity, um, which has advantages and disadvantages. But on the advantageous side, we are very flexible, um, and we are extremely customer-oriented. And really, most of our development work is designed specifically around our current users, what they're doing, their pain points, their workflow desires and issues and questions. Um, so you know, most of our features are really designed for fixing those kind of problems, which is really where this whole insert editing thing came from. It's been something that people have sort of talked about for a while. And of course, our customers have talked about it for a while and asked us about it. And it's been kind of on the back burner. And it's like, OK, let's, let's make this happen. And we've now made it happen. And now that we've actually got it done, I'll have to confess that it's even more transparent to me on just how amazing it really is and how cool it is. Um, but, you know, really, you, you will find if you talk to folks who own um, Cinedex and are using them on a daily basis, um, you know, there have, been, there have been people who have contacted, attacked, contacted us for feature changes and, and our feature additions. Really typical scenario is somebody needs, you know, a post house needs a specific H.264 profile for a customer that somebody forgot about or the customer didn't tell them about or whatever, and we've been known to deliver them a, you know, a profile overnight so they can basically do that H.264 encoding the next day and, you know, they're good to go. Now, obviously, in general, we don't turn around customer requests in a day that is, you know, more the um, exception than the rule, uh, but, you know, it can be done, and, uh, but really, we do listen to our customers and we absolutely like to talk to you about, about your problems, and I will also have to confess that it kind of keeps our developers on their toes because they really like to get these sort of like odd questions in the middle um, regarding something I was talking about a little bit earlier. Um, you know, we've got this Avid Media Composer thing working really nicely, but uh, we um, hadn't really looked at Avid DS, and one of, our, one of the customers who's actually looking at the system, they're, they're testing out a system right now, they've got both Avid DS as well as Media Composers in-house, and they wanted to try it with the DS, and they discovered that it didn't really work. And uh, we discovered, we just figured out why it wouldn't work, but you know, I was like, listen, we've got a lot of stuff on the, in the oven right now, so we're not going to be able to get to that probably for you know, a few weeks anyway, a month or so. Six hours later, I had a, a test version uh, from our developer, development folks because they, they got a B in their bond, and they were like, okay, I'm going to figure this out, and, and we're gonna, I'm, I'm going to fix this. So literally, like a few hours later, I had a, had a fix, and I sent it off, and uh, they're testing it out. Um, so these things can happen. Um, and do happen, and you know, like I said, we're very customer oriented. So, kind of a way to close things up. Thank you all very much. Okay, ciao.